destructive at all, but that's rubbish. I wonder how long they left. killer used torture devices like this to kill his victims. Why kill them like witches? I'm surprised there's no exhibit for the accusers. It's such an important part of Salem's history. Actually, several artifacts aren't on display yet. We're currently preparing them upstairs in the restoration room. Better to see what else is in here. I told you to look after Iris. You're not the boss of me. I found a bunch of stuff downstairs. The bell killer is offing his victims as if they're witches. I'm heading upstairs to see what else I can find. I should have told you to follow me, and then maybe you would have stayed at the church. You know me so well.
Just keep an eye out for security cameras and alarms. Thanks for the tip, but this isn't even my first break in today. Yeah, this looks like the right place. Now let's see what these artifacts can tell me about the witch trials. focus on this killer, but the echoes from these sensations keep interfering, like deaths from the past, pleading to be remembered. husband and I stepped off the platform and onto the giant hissing locomotive. I remember looking back at our small town and thinking of all the happy memories we made there. But I was excited to start our new life in Salem. I, I must have dozed off because I was startled awake by the sound of screeching metal. And as the train came to a halt, all I could hear was the torrential rain pelting against the roof. I looked out the window. There was only darkness. Then came the brightest flash of lightning I had ever seen. When my husband left to inquire about the delay, a woman in the back of the train started screaming. We rushed over to her and, and asked her what was wrong. But all she could manage to say through her sobs was something about seeing the spirits of the dead wandering in the rain. Stranger still were the passengers that were suddenly stricken with the painful memories of their past. It was at this point that I became truly terrified, so I set out to find Joe. When I reached the cab, and still hadn't found him, I was worried. I looked out the front window and saw the train's conductor laboring to move a downed tree from the tracks. And there was Joe walking up to help. However, instead of grabbing hold of the tree, Joe bent down, picked up a rock 